it's your girl Nancy Red, and this is season three of Mompreneurs, where every week we celebrate beautiful black entrepreneurs who are simultaneously amazing business moguls and awesome moms. We listen to their life stories and inspiring advice. Now, we all know the adage, first come love, then comes marriage, and then what you don't know is comes Jennifer and her business, <laughs> because she is incredible. I love her mompreneurship. She has personally married over 100 couples, and so many of us wonder, and we can't wait to hear how, she ended up appearing as the officiant on Netflix's Love is Blind, who married DeBrat and Judy on WeTV. And there's so much more to her story, as you see from her wonderful background. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> okay. This is so exciting because we all love weddings. We all love marriages. And how wonderful to have a business that revolves around this. Yes. I love love. So it's, it's, <laughs> I, I get to be with people on their best day. And it is a great feeling. It is their best day. I, I just celebrated 17 years. Congratulations. And we're now officially grown folks. You yes. know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you got the grown folks' health things. Like, what is happening to my back? What is happening to everything? And looking back at my wedding was the best thing that could have happened to me this year. I was like, this is the best time. And you get to be the key part of this because my officiant was my childhood pastor who had been, who'd, who'd watched me grow up my whole life. But not everybody has that ability right. to have that person. So, so you step in a very important role, sometimes with near strangers, sometimes with best friends, but you make it special. That is always my, that's always my goal. And I didn't start out being the officiant. That was the, the, I did not want to do that. And so for it to have grown to this is actually pretty pretty wild when I when I think about it. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so you, we went from just trying to help other people just like you, just trying to get their marriage on in a special certain, certain circumstance to being a one-stop shop for it all. But we're going to get into all of that very soon. But first, I got to ask you, who puts the mom in your mompreneurship? Tell us about your family. What are we working with here? So I am, I have been married for 14 years. Um, I have three sons, um, 11, 9, and 3. And that three-year-old, he really runs this house. It is, I'm like, we started over on purpose. And I'm like, I'm too old. <laughs> I feel like I'm too old for this. Because he keeps us on our toes at all times. But I am a boy mom to the fullest. I mean, that, that's that, you, that, the most important part you said here is you did this on purpose. Yes, on, on purpose. You know, you were time. like, I, we have all, we are, we have gotten out of diapers. Yes. We have almost gotten out of grade school. Yes. And yet, we here have we cravings. It was a pandemic. Oh my God, you had a pandemic baby. I had a pandemic baby. So yes. many pandemic. Those, those <laughs> pandemic babies are wild. Whew. Mm. That's There's going to be a documentary about it. A hundred percent. They're y'all. They're gonna. They're actually gonna be what turns America around. Yes. I believe in the pandemic babies. They have the energy. They have the discipline. Yes. Because they have. They've just been loved yes. so closely. So in close. such close quarters. Yes. A hundred percent. Okay. All right. Well, let's get back to business. Okay. Which came first, entrepreneurship or motherhood? Motherhood, and that is probably why I I struggled in the beginning as an entrepreneur because. Mom guilt is real. When you dedicate your life to being a mom, being a wife, and now you have this new baby that you want to give your attention to, the guilt starts to set in. Am I giving too much to my business and not enough to my family? Am I spending too much time trying to grow something that may not become anything when I know what I want my family to, to, to become? And so it's like, is it worth the risk? And that literally ate me up for so long because my identity was wrapped into being a wife and mom. So if you asked me to introduce myself before, I would have said, my name is Jennifer Allen. I've been married for X amount of years. You know, these are my kids. That was my identity. And I noticed that once that intro started to change and I did not lead with, I'm Jennifer Allen. I've been married for, you know, X number of years. This, these are my kids. And it turned into my personal accomplishments first. It made me think, well, am I putting my personal accomplishments first above my family? And I struggled with that for so long. And I realized, no, I'm not. 
look, I can I can be your mama, your wife, and take care of business. And once I got past that piece, my life just it just increased and it became a, a better lifestyle for for my family in general. I love that. And let's talk about how it's become a better lifestyle because yeah. not only is it income, it makes you happy. They get to see mama being, you know, more than yeah. just mom. Not that there's anything wrong with being just mom, but it makes you fulfilled, right? Yeah. So for those of our audience members who don't know you, let's talk about what I like to call your hustle hierarchy. Yeah. Because as we've already discussed, not a, a business of 2024 does not need to just have one hustle. You need no. a hustle hierarchy. So what's yeah. at the top? What's like the bulk of your business income? And then what are the other little seedlings that that's come under? So my, my main business income is I'm the owner of Just Elope. We are an elopement and micro wedding planning company based here in Dallas. And so what I do is I partner with local venues to provide all inclusive elopements and micro weddings that include the venue, the photographer, the officiant and the on-site coordinator with as little as 24 hours notice. So you could come to me and say you want to get married tomorrow and it would look the exact same way as the couple that comes to me and say they want to get married in six months. And so we have gotten this down to a science since 2017. We've had the opportunity to marry over 450 couples. In total, I personally have married over 100 couples. And that is the top of the food chain. As you begin to trickle down, my individual officiating would be next. So people who have large traditional ceremonies, who they have a full wedding planned with the wedding planner and all these things, but they still need someone to marry them. That would be the next phase of what my business is, writing custom love stories for couples based on a questionnaire that I send them and us being able to just kind of talk through, through things so I can write the perfect ceremony for their wedding day. The next thing underneath that would be my premarital coaching. I believe that all of it just kind of builds up because when we first started Jesse Lope, we had a couple, the very first year we married eight couples and the next year, one of them got divorced and it crushed me. And I don't know why I took it so personal, but I, I did. And so I said, you know, I want to be able to, cause most of our weddings don't happen in 24 hours, but we do have that, that capability. So I don't want it to come off like, well, they marrying people in five minutes. No wonder. No. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's definitely not that. You reap what you sow. <laughs> right. Right. So I don't, I don't want to say that most couples do take a couple of months to pay their wedding off and that sort of thing, but we do have the capability, but I took it personally. And so from there, I made it a mission to figure out how can I pour back into couples so that I can at least feel good that I have given them the opportunity to start off on their best foot. And so I became a premarital coach. Um, and from there, I wrote a relationship workbook called Hashtag Relationship Goals. And it just allows couples to dig deeper into the conversations that they're having every single day, having a relationship meeting to really like check in to see how the other person is doing and follow up on the things that you talked about the week before. And these just all things that I implemented within my own business. I mean, within my own marriage that have allowed us to have a successful marriage through trial and error, of course, because when you get married young, you grow up together, which means that all of your flaws are on display where when you're when you come into a marriage as an adult, right, you've already learned the things you like and you don't like. And so you get to put your best foot forward. And I met my husband he was 19. You know, I'm three years older than, than, than he is. We dated for a year and a half and then we got married. And so we grew up together. And in doing that, I realized that there are so many conversations that people don't have because you don't think to have them. You don't. I, I told him something the other day from when I was a kid. And he's like, I never knew that. And I'm like, because it was, you know, you don't just stuff just doesn't come out at all the time. So. I wanted to foster an environment where people were having these deeper conversations that they didn't know that they needed to have. And so that's like that bottom tier piece of what I do for Jesse Lowe. I love that. Thank you. And it was always something in the back of your head that you felt people needed. But at what point, how old were your kids and where were you in life when you said, I, I, I got to do my, I got to do my business. It's time. Yes. I'm not just mom. I'm a mompreneur. Oh, not just mom. We, you know, I'm a firm believer in finding, 
I think all great businesses that thrive from a place of you filling a void is is what typically works for people. My husband left for deployment the same day that we got married and we had no choice because of the short notice but to go to City Hall. And so because of that, long story short, I wanted to start a business that allowed other couples to have options immediately if they needed to get married. And so I kept wanting to, so I had a City Hall wedding in 2010. My husband left for deployment. 2012, we had our first baby. When he was 10 months, I was pregnant with our second baby. And I kept saying like, well, we can still have a wedding. We can still have a wedding. We were paying for daycare for two kids. It was just so much going on and it wasn't going to happen for me. So I started doing photography and I'm like, you know what? I can figure out a way to incorporate this into maybe like scouting out some nice places to marry people outside the courthouse. And so we started out like at public parks. And so my children were, when we first, when we started, were five and five and three. And so it was difficult because when you start something new, I know me personally, I become obsessed. Like I want to look it up. I want to, and it, you, you get so into the moment of like, well, what if, what about, I love the creative process behind things. And so my husband would be like, man, what are you doing? Because it's not like this was business number one. It was just the one that stuck. So I was constantly always trying to create something, trying to do something. And in the beginning, he he did not have this like big supportive hat on. And I didn't blame him because I started and stopped so many things. I knew I wanted to do something, but I didn't know what. And this was something that stuck. Because I resonated with it. I understood it. I had a, uh, it was a meaning behind it that wasn't just a dollar amount, which allowed me to continue to do it even when I didn't know what was going on. And it wasn't because, oh, I saw somebody else do it. So I think I'll be good at it too, you know. And it just has turned into seven years later. It's crazy. I love it. Now, what was your profession before? Because if you had both kids in daycare, obviously you're working. Yes. Unless you, unless no. you just couldn't even. No. <laughs> so I was an executive assistant at, at an elementary school, um, and I still work full time. I work a full time job now. I love the life and the flexibility that working full time and running my business full time gives me and my family. I have a remote role that I absolutely love. And it allows me to live my life like I'm out here selling drugs. Like it literally like who wants extra who wants the guac? Like I got the I don't care if it's extra. I got it. You know, it's Oh my god, are you my are you my twin? Are you my spirit animal? Because I also have a remote job that I absolutely yes. love. I mean, I, I love my job. I love and it. I love my business. Yes. And I love being ridiculous. Yes. This is hilarious. And, and exactly. I want if I want to put it in my Amazon cart, like baby, I'm checking out. It doesn't matter. It does not <laughs> and I love that for me and my kids. See, I'm putting it in my retirement cart. I'm trying to like, oh, I'm trying to, definitely. I'm trying to just like, we're, we're hustling now yeah. to sit oh, down. Yes. My dream is to sit down. Yes, 100%, 100%. <laughs> and you know, for so long, when we first got married and our kids were small, I, I remember telling my best friend, like, man, all I want to be able to do is if I decide I want to go buy some new curtains or a new comforter set, just because like I just want to be able to do that because that's how tight things were and so it's like to be in this space now I absolutely love it because we are able to save and then still give our kids experiences that we want them to have if they show interest in something my oldest is into animation and coding and that sort of thing so being able to this summer you know send him to coding camp and my middle baby, he loves basketball, paying for AAU basketball. He wants to be a cook, a chef, paying for him to go to a, a cooking camp. Like all these things, I feel like to me, that is the true definition. People often talk about like a soft life. My definition of a soft life literally is being able to make my kids breakfast in the morning, make them a hot lunch, work a job that fulfills me 
and run a business that I have absolutely uh, adore. And I do feel like one day um, I will be a full-time entrepreneur. And if I don't, I could be a full-time entrepreneur right this second, right? Like it, it would be fine. But what would I have to cut back on? And I don't want to cut back. I just want to make more money. <laughs> First and foremost, your definition of soft life needs to be like a pin on a wall. Yeah. Because life is not a zero-sum game. And um, would you say that your mompreneurship has afforded you this financial freedom 1, to buy 000. these curtains? Would you be able to do all of this without your side hustle? No. I No, I would not. I would I, I would not. And that is why I absolutely love it. To see the savings there and then still to be able to see the things that we can do for our for our children. And as great as a provider my, my husband is, like I tell him all the time, like I pride myself on being a provider. Like I love that. I love to financially contribute to my household. We get so many conversations about 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. Maybe the light company don't care who paid that bill. <laughs> These children do not care who paid for camp. It, are we going or not? Like, it doesn't matter. You know, when we book family vacations. It doesn't matter. And I think that to put the pressure on one person to be financially responsible for everybody to me, it's unfair. And that's just my opinion on it. Um, whatever works in somebody's house is what works for, for them. But why would I want you to have all the pressure when I'm your partner and I can relieve some of that and we can we can live in abundance versus just having, you know, just enough? Again, I feel like everything needs to be like a throw pillow <laughs> that you say. <laughs> Uh, do you think seeing you now does your is your husband just a, a, a nine to five or does he have his own hustle as well no he is a nine to five or he's a data analyst and he loves his job and he says you know he'll probably always work he's former military he loves a, root, a routine um and so he he's great he's the People often ask me, like, how can you, you know, do all these things and be the success? And, oh, you're on Netflix and da, da, da. I would not be any type of success without my husband because who's with these children when I'm off being, you know, the cool kid for for the day? Or, you know, I'm on this interview and he dropped everybody off this morning, you know, so that I could have time to get myself together. Like, I could not do it alone. And he, he always, I'm like, you know, thank you so much for always just stepping up and he's like look i'm trying to be stead man like i'm trying to we trying to get you to be oprah okay step one <laughs> <laughs> he's like look i'm trying to be in the cut he's like so whatever we got to do to get you to the top so i could just be a stay-at-home dad he's like i'm okay with that so yeah this brings me so much joy because i feel like i have a, a similarly supportive husband yeah what does someone need to, I guess, so, so much of this is, we have a, a, mompreneurs come in all shapes and sizes, right? Whether it is you want the financial freedom to buy some curtains or you need to literally be able to pay your light bill because right. whatever kind of job you can get, you can't do that. Um, a, a, a running theme is finding time and balancing romance, partnership. And some people are still looking for that. I, I laugh because people ask me, I don't really have an answer uh, because again, I, I met my partner so young, but you're more in this game what is your advice to someone looking for someone who's comfortable with someone who is a mompreneur, who has all these different goals? You see these couples, you see yeah, what's working. Yeah. When someone is like, I, I cannot find anybody, what, would you, do you have any advice for them? Definitely. I, I, I think that you attract what, what you put out. And I think that, you know, we often hear talk about high value men and how, how high value women. I think that ultimately when you meet somebody, if you are very transparent about what your goals are and what you, you want to do, if you already get that red flag that they are not the type of person that would be supportive, let it go. We often, as women especially, we get with people and we think that we have this superpower to change them to be someone that they are not. When I met my husband, we were dating. Everything was great. We started living t together and I was like, you know what? My lease is going to be up. I want you to get your own place because I want you to experience living alone. 
because I've never, you know, I don't want you to feel like you missed out on that. We're so serious, blah, blah, blah. He told me if we, if I move out of here, we are breaking up. And I said, I guess we're breaking up. And he got his own place. I was standing my ground because I had dated somebody before him, girl, that was so trash. And so I had all these boundaries set on what I was not doing, I'm not doing, I'm not doing. And so he moved out and we broke up. And my mom told me, she said, I'm going to tell you something and I never want you to forget it. She said, Tavares is a good man because he's a good man. It has nothing to do with you. So he's going to be good to whoever he is with. It's not because you just this great big old treat and prize. I'm sure you're good. She's like, but I need for you to, uh, to understand that he is this person because that's who he is. And so she's like, now you can keep this power streak going, trying to prove a point if you want to. And we had broke up in that October. We got back together in March. We were married in July. Mm-hmm. Babe, I went and got my man because he told me he was going to go to Ikea. I, he was going on a date. I said, oh, y'all, you're not going to be at the throw pillows with some chick. Nah, baby, come on home. No, don't don't get them Swedish meatballs. <laughs> Do not. I won't make you my own meatballs. Do not. Okay? <laughs> so, okay, y'all, okay, shout out to the moms out there with great advice because yeah. I am in a stable, happy marriage because of my mom, my brother. That, that is a good man. Yeah. Yo, you that. But to be fair, you got to listen because they also had said some other men were trash. So, yeah, ha. Yeah. So, <laughs> and the so, one before that was she was like, he's trash. I'm like, no, he's not, mom. I love him. She's like, girl, no, I'm telling you now. Oh my she gosh. was right. She's right. That's amazing. And I, but the thing is, the boundaries did help you know when know when she was right. You have 100%. to have some. You have to kiss some frogs. You find the prince. The prince supports you. Wants to be your steadman. Here you are with a great life, with a great job, with a great business, with a great family, doing the things that you want to do. Yeah. So when you're looking at this, though, it doesn't just happen overnight. Like you said, you always wanted to. You started slow. You build up. Who are some of the people that helped you build your business? Who are some of the people who said, yes, let me let me help you create Just Elope, the first and most important aspect of what it is you do? So when I first launched my business, I did not know what I was doing. I sat, <laughs> I sat in the house. I told my mom, my sister, my husband, I'm like, okay, this is what I want to do. And again, we were broke and I'm paying for two. We got two kids in daycare. My mom was like, okay, what do you need me to do? And so I said, okay, I'm like, I need to make my website, which I knew how to do. And I said, but I don't have any pictures. And so her and my dad, my mom went and bought a wedding dress. My dad got a suit. I took pictures of the two of them. Um, My sister became ordained. I got my mom ordained and my husband. My mom bought me a pre-made logo off Etsy so I could have a logo. Her and my dad... I renewed their vows. My, my sister renewed their vows so that I could take their pictures, so that I could have content to put out on social media when I first started and on my website. And literally, that is how we started. It was a family affair from the beginning. And they had no experience, right? No one's a public speaker. No one has ever officiated a wedding book before. But because of the support system that I know I'm thankful to have. You know, I know that's something that not everybody has. Um, But because of that, I was able to push through and start Jesse Lope and turn it into what it is today. But had it not been from, because I knew, okay, I'm going to take the pictures, but who's going to be the uh, officiant? And so I'm like, let me figure this out. So I'm, So for two years, so I launched my business in 2017. I got ordained in 2015 because I was, it took me two years to figure out how to actually do Just Elope because I'm like, am I going to memorize the ceremony and like say it while I'm taking pictures? I'm like, how is this going to work? And I I just kind of couldn't figure it out. So I left it where it was, but it just became more and more and more of a thing like I have to do this and I kept trying to think of a name I'm like what should I call it we were going through all kind of random stuff and my husband was like what if you just name it just elope and I'm like boy that's too basic no we ain't we no 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 I'm thinking sweet occasions by Jennifer or you know (laughs) so he's like 
He's like, no. He's like, you need to come up with something. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. And then I start thinking, hmm, just elope. And then he's like, so our, our business used to be just elope Dallas. And so um, he's like, yeah, just elope Dallas. Like, just put it out there what, what you want them to do. And I'm like, huh, okay. And here we are, seven years later, just elope. Having married over 400 people, close yeah. to 500 at yeah. this point. Yeah, it's crazy. Now, do you remember your first organic customer, the first person who didn't know you, who just wanted to get married, yes. didn't know that those people were your people yes. in the pictures? Yes. I, like I said, I was doing professional photography, and I had a couple call me and say, hey, um, a friend of mine told me that she knew you. And we are getting married at the courthouse. And I wanted to know, could you take our pictures um, at City Hall? And so um, I said, oh, okay. She said, because we were scheduled to get married at a venue. But once they found out we were a same-sex couple, they refused to go forward with our wedding. And so I said, oh, my gosh. Now, I launched my business in February of 2017. This phone call, I, February the 1st, this phone call I got from them was like on the 4th. And so um, I was like, well, I love to take your pictures. I said, well, I just started this business. It's called Jesse Lope. And, you know, we could get married. I can marry you. We can, you know, I have like these like outdoor parks that I've scouted out. That's really pretty. You know, y'all can show up. We can do the ceremony there. And the phone line like went silent. And so I was like, Hello? And she came back on and she was crying. And she was like, I did not want to get married at the courthouse. She was like, oh my God, this is so amazing. Thank you so much. Yes, we want to go forward with this. We want to get married. Like, what do I have to do? And that is how I got my very first customer. And it has been on ever since. That is so beautiful. Yeah. And and it's just, it's amazing. You started your company right in time. It took you two years to figure yeah. it out, but right on time. Yeah. And boom. And that, and because my biggest fear in the beginning was, how am I going to convince people to let me marry them outside? How am I going to tell people, pay me to marry you outside? And lo and behold, it has worked in... It's grown to now we partner with some of the top venues in Dallas to provide these luxury ceremonies. And my advice to anybody that kind of, you know, is what is thinking about starting anything. Don't look at the complete ending of where you want to be. Like, do what you can right now. Like, if you are a hair braider, don't think about, well, I can't start braiding hair because I don't have a shop. And I don't have a sign above the door. If that means you're braiding at home, then start at home. If you're going to client's house, then go to client's house. You don't have to not do it because you're not at social media standards. And that is what paralyzes so many people is that they feel like in order to be any type of success, they have to already come out gleaming. Like you, you just got to have it all together in order for you you know, if, if you don't, if you haven't taken a picture with your arms folded up yet, you are not going to make it. It is like, if you already you, don't have 2 million social man, media followers, yeah. are you even worthy of are a post? You, are you worthy? And it's like, no, you, you jump out there and you do it. I started my business with zero and we go from there. I love that. So you started from zero, your first paid customer was a very touching and meaningful and inspiring one. How do we go from there to WeTV? So in 2019, I won a uh, a mentor me contest. Uh, uh, Je Jessica Dupard, the real baby Judy, she posted online, "Hey, looking for a couple, looking for a company that I can mentor in 2019." Uh, submit your pitch, you know, and we'll go from there. And I was, I ended up getting selected as the person that she would mentor. And from there, we just developed a relationship. Um, and so that led to once she got engaged, 
so they got married on um 222 22. so probably back in like november she was like hey we're trying to figure things out with our officiant um kind of talking through you know some things we just wanted to kind of put it on your radar and so i was like okay cool i i, I would love to nothing he didn't hear anything else uh february 11th 11 days before their wedding she's like okay we want you to be our uh officiant and well, I'm you like, did say you are micro wedding yeah. specialist and, and you can like, do things in 24 hours. Yeah, I was like, okay, great. And so <laughs> that was just such a, a, a whirlwind. It it allowed me to work with their planner, Ellie, and realize like why I love my micro weddings. Because what she created in like that short period of time, like if anybody's watched their show, like 11 days when before their wedding, they didn't even have a venue. And so it was this amazing feat that she pulled off and made me realize that is not my lane. You were talking earlier about staying in your lane. I'm like, that's not my lane. Um, and I have people reach out to say, oh, can you plan my big wedding for me? And of course, the money is there. But I've learned that it's one thing to do something good. It's something else to excel at something. And I only want to do things that I excel at in the wedding realm because this is no do-overs. So yeah, I could probably plan your big wedding. I love from a logistical standpoint. I love logistics. I love a timeline. The project manager girly in, in me absolutely loves it, but that's not my lane. And if I can't give you an exceptional service for something of that nature, then I don't want to do it. Yeah, it's not worth it to me. So when we look at this, how did your business change after you went from just elope Dallas to the expansion to reality TV where everyone's like, I, did, was it was it a was it a floodgate? Did everyone say, I want to be married by Jennifer? You know what? What I learned was I was not the focal point of Netflix or We TV. I was just a supporting member. And so from a individual standpoint, the floodgates did not open because they didn't know my name. They didn't know who I was um, because it wasn't about me. And typically as the wedding officiant, you are really just a background noise. And so I'm thankful for the publicist that I had at, at the time, shout out to Dalila. She really like pushed that media for me. Like I was able to get a lot of great press from it and that is what caused more people to, to, to reach out. And I think that people need to understand being on a show, if you are not the focus, it really doesn't matter. Like the fact that you were that you were there because no one knew my name. No one knew, oh, unless I told them like, hey, that's that's me. No one could just say, hey, look at that officiant. She's because it wasn't about me. It was their wedding day. But having a great supporting team in the sense of, okay, this is done. Let's put boots on the, the ground and really push this story so she can tell it from her narrative. That is what has allowed the growth to come from it. Exactly. And I think that's what's been fun. So so when you look at this and you look at all the fun things you've gotten to do and the life you get to lead, what do your boys have to say about this? Now, your youngest. You, you know you're, you're a successful businesswoman if you decide to have a third. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but what, what do your boys think? Do you think they'll follow in your entrepreneurial footsteps? They are so proud. I have a really weird thing about ever telling anybody what I do. So, like, when I go um, to their schools and I, I'm never like, oh, I'm Jennifer. You should check me out on that. No, I never. But when I get there, they're like, Oh my God, Madison Jackson told me you were on Netflix. Is this true? Were you on Love is Blind? Were you on Weeks? Like they are so proud to tell everybody that listens that their mom was on the news last night. Their mom was this. Oh, you can get on Netflix. Maddox got in trouble for trying to log into Netflix on a school computer to pull up the episode that I was on. And so I'm like, no punishment. But, you know, let's let's stay off the school computer doing that. But yeah, they are amazing kids. And I honestly do think that 
they are going to be an entrepreneur in some sense of the way, because even now this summer, they're like, what can we have for a summer business? And they are always talking about, you know, should we make t-shirts? Should we learn how to cut grass? Should we do this or that? Like wash cars. They love having their own money and they're not afraid to work for it because they have an in-house example of, you know, a father who's a college graduate. My husband graduated last year from college. So they got to witness, you know, for four years straight, him going to school, doing all these things, studying, and then getting to see him graduate from, from college. Then they get to see the other side of that, of having a mom that is an entrepreneur who is figuring it out. So they really get the best of both worlds. But yes, they love money. And they love <laughs> they love money just for the simple fact of like being able to go into the store and, and they're like, well, I'm going to get me some chips. I'm going to get me a drink. Like I, I got my own money or, you know, and they they love that financial freedom because we we teach them you only have what you work for. And if you're not willing to work for the extras, then you're not going to have the extras. We're going to provide for you. You're never going to go without. But if you want things above and beyond what we're going to give you as your parents, then you need to work for it. Because I don't give allowance for, you know, you making your bed up. Baby, that's your bed. Them your clothes. That's your bathroom. Like, I, I, I'm not giving you allowance for that. So, but what you do get paid for is your job is going to school. So both of our bo our big boys are in the gifted and talented program. Very, very intelligent. And so we pay for A's. That encourages them. Oh, we straight A's around here because they paying out the big bucks. So we'll pay you for that. I'll, I'll pay you for doing something above and beyond what you're supposed to do. Because no, one, no one's paying me for being your mama. Nobody. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> also, again, I am so amused because I also, A's, A's get you video game. Yeah. That's it. And my poor son, he's like, I don't think I'm going to be able to get an A. And in math, I was like, you better, you better find somebody. Because I'm not going to be the one. I was game. like, I was like, it's straight A's or nothing. I mean, I'm not saying I'm going to take anything away from you. Correct. But these video, but these video games. Correct. And Correct. somehow, and I laugh. <laughs> this is, and also, I think these types of things teach them strategy, right? By the grace of God, this dude pulled off an A in this class. Hundred percent. And I asked how he was just like, I had to work. I had to work on it. I had to work on my communication skills. Yeah. So I was like, all right, go for it. But setting those boundaries wanted. when they're young, I think that that is the difference. I look at different people. Um, a lot of my friends have kids that are older. And so I look at um, or even just family members, the things learn from your village, right? So instilling in them now at, at this age that we're not settling for anything less than an A means that when you get to, to high school and you get to college and you're in this difficult class and you, you already have it instilled in you that like, I need to do everything that I possibly can. Like I need to study. I need to go above and beyond because that's all I know. And so we're not going to, you know, dog you if you get a B, but it's you are encouraged to do your absolute best because why get a B when you can get an A? Exactly. And I think one of the running themes of our conversation with you is boundaries. Yes. And understanding, I mean, like, unfortunately you have, like you say, I have a great support system. You have a great support system, so you know what healthy boundaries are. Right. And I hope people listening who might not have a mama or a partner who is so sensible can hear the type of advice that you've gotten, that you've listened to. Because right. unfortunately, sometimes we get bad advice. Mm. Sometimes the advice that people who love us are giving us is terrible. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not, that, and they, we have no control over that. We don't know until the chips have fallen out. Right. But also, and I feel very fortunate. But you have to also be be mindful of the people who you seek at who you seek advice from because I don't I don't like yes yeses from from people. I want someone to challenge me. I want somebody to tell me like why something's not a good idea. Help help me pick holes in whatever it is that I'm trying to do. Like let's talk worst case scenario. Don't just blow my head up because you think oh you're great you you should do this. Oh I think I think you should no. 
tell me, okay, well, if you do that, then this is what's going to happen from there. And, and, and what if this happens and how about that? So on and so forth. And so I think that that is another really important piece is be mindful of who you're even trying to seek advice from. If you have, if you have somebody who you notice they never really say anything to challenge you, then it's like they may just be telling you what you want to hear so that y'all can like get past that conversation and get back to whatever it is that they want to talk about. Like challenge me because if you come to me and you ask for my advice, friend, not a friend, colleague, whatever, like I can tell you what I think because obviously you thought enough of me to ask. So I'm going to think enough of you to be honest. Oh, I know. And it's one of those things. I'm a very honest person and I'm always couching it in, this is what I either wish someone had told yes. me yes, or this is what someone told me. And yes. I said, I don't want you to come back to me. You can be salty with me now or you can be salty with me later. <laughs> correct, correct. Literally, that's where I roll. Okay, so with that, before you leave, do you have any kind of life mantra, words of wisdom that you want to share with the audience who might be listening and wishing that they could do something like what you are doing. Um, because sometimes people think it's a zero sum game. They think I got to just have no job and have a million followers and have the, the picture like this. Yeah, but listen. you're presenting what it means to, um, to have a balance, to have it all literally and, and figuratively. And that doesn't mean having it all, but managing it all. Yeah. Um, I think the first thing is don't quit your job. Let's start. Let's let, let's start there. Being employed, especially early on, has allowed me to create boundaries in my business. So when you first start a business, typically, especially if you're starting it because you need the income and not because you just think this is a good idea, you are more apt to take on people who you normally would not work with, walking red flags because you need the money. So as long as you're chasing the money of it, it's hard to set boundaries. So you need to continue to work so that you can have those boundaries of saying, nope, I have packages that the max guest count is 25. Could I make it 26? I could. But I've learned that that's the max for that place, for my team, for that reason. So when somebody comes to me now and they're like, oh, well, could, could you just do 27? I, I just kind of got 30. No. Because you need to pick the next package because that's why it's it's in place. That's why it is what it is. And it's because of these boundaries, I'm able to stay consistent in how I handle business. If someone's speaking on my behalf about my business, they have a reliable um, script that they, that they, they can follow. It's not a situation of, oh, well, I know like, if you just tell her this or that, you know, she'll let you do this. Word travels. The same way people refer you, they'll also point out your weaknesses. Oh, it's well, you, you said that you said that so and so could have it. Why can't I correct, have it? Correct. No, correct. I think it's really, and I also think it's really smart <laughs> as a parent and as a wife. Yes. To to just be able to to stay consistent. Like yes. I am consistent. I do not flip flop. No. I am a consistent individual. Yeah. And, and you are too. So with that, our time is almost up, sadly. But I, I always have to ask everyone at the end, um, my favorite segment called Mompreneur's Manifestation. And okay. I ask each guest, what's next for you? Or what are you hoping that comes next? And how can we help to manifest success in this endeavor for you? My manifestation is that Jesse Lope becomes a household name for anyone who is looking to have an intimate, stress-free ceremony. I want the same way someone thinks of running off to Vegas to get married, that they think, oh no, you need to contact Jennifer with Jesse Lope. I want for to reach more couples and provide them with premarital coaching so that they can have a healthy marriage. I'm working on a workbook, um, questions to ask while dating, because I feel like, okay, let's start there before it even gets to a proposal. And I just wish and manifest and pray that it reaches so many hands and that it helps to provide a new footing for people going forward so that we have more healthy and successful marriages. That's my message. Well, okay. Well, we accept it. 
we receive it. We are here to help however we can. And on that point, tell us where everyone can find you and to keep up with what you've got going on, what you hope to have going on, what you're working on, and also to learn more about all the incredible work that you do. Yes. So my Instagram is, my personal Instagram is I am Jennifer Allen. My Jesty Lope Instagram is Jesty Lope LLC. And our website is www.jestylope.net. I love it. And you are not just Dallas. You are nationwide, international. So we are Dallas based for the majority of our packages that we offer, but we can cust- I can customize any package for anywhere. Okay, you heard her. Yes. She can, she can make it happen. Yes. So she can help you at any stage of your relationship, and you have helped us so much. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you for having me. And everyone, thank you for watching and listening to Mompreneurs. And just a reminder, a brand new episode goes live each Monday on Urban One Podcast Network, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Visit UrbanOnePodcasts.com. That's Urban, the number one, podcasts.com. Mompreneurs is brought to you by the Urban One Podcast Network and Madam Noir. Created, produced, and hosted by me, Nancy Wren. Executive produced by Sarita Wesley, Allison McGovna, and Tanya Hoffler-Moore. Produced and edited by Jiminique Miller.